Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? As always, there's a Spotify playlist down below for all the songs in easy access right there to sort by recently added. And um, yeah, let's hop into it. Uh, this week we've got 29 songs I wanted to talk about, 29, and we're starting off in the bad category. Songs that I thought were uh, not great, just remember, just my opinion. That's how opinions work. Uh, we've got Bear Grylls featuring Micah Martin with Happy. So this is a cover of Swedish House Mafia's Don't uh, Don't You Worry Child, but everything that made the original so iconic was removed from this cover um, and replaced with dull production and flat mixing. This was a major miss of a track. I almost put this in trash category. Almost, almost. And then we've got David Guetta and Morton with The Future Is Now. Uh, more Future A from David Guetta and Morton, and it's uh, more of the same old, dull track with this one. Uh, basic kick, simple melody, nonsense vocals, it's kind of just whatever. Um, this one's a double release uh, with the, uh, or double-sided single with The Truth, and I thought that one was a much stronger track. I don't know why this one was the one that they put out as the primary single, but um, whatever, we can move on from that. So we've got Matroda featuring Matr or Matroda uh, featuring Madame Parker with Boombox. Um, this is just a silly song. Uh, the vocal chops, uh, like if you want to call them that, essentially sound like a ten-year-old um, making like sex grunting noises, almost like a kitty. You know what I mean? They're like hey hey hey, huh, huh. like they like they do that, and yeah, it's it it's it's weird. Um, the beat is like a like a. Plinko style run to it, uh, and it's just a really messy track with not much going on personally. So sorry, Matroda, not a fan. Uh, then we got Vice Stone featuring Emily Falve with "Count Me Out." Uh, it really is a shame that the iconic uh, sample or synth hit from Vice Stone nowadays just sounds so sad. Um, these tracks are lifeless and lack any real backbone. And Vice Stone needs a, a resurgence or needs a a redo on their their sound design and that synth. Just take it out. Forget about that synth. It's it's terrible. Now we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were meh. We've got Own Boss and Selva with the uh, Riot Riot 10 remix. Uh, I feel like this remix and song title packaging are here just because it's funny. Honestly, Riot 10 um, doesn't really do a whole ton to the song other than like doubling the kick uh, on the drops. This remix didn't need to happen. It's not bad per se. It's just a, uh, just boring. Um, which is actually a good thing for Riot 10. I haven't really been loving Riot 10 stuff as of late, as of recent, but um, yeah, that's not that. We got the Fat Rat with Still Here With You, a very calm track with a simple melody and kind of lackluster vocals, I would say. It honestly kind of sounds like a, a kid song. It's what I imagine, like, when a kid kind of grows out of the, like, very kitty like, wheels on the bus go around and round song and start listening to real music. Like, this is like the in-between song of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's not to say it's bad. It's just really not that deep at all, so... We got Lewis Thompson with Love Again. I think this song had some good potential, but just fell really flat. Could have been this grand anthemic house cut, but um, the vocal samples have this like chanting sense to them. What sense why it's kind of grand uh, and chanting, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it didn't really gel well with the beat. I would say this, they sound quite distant from each other, and um, that beat is kind of just a standard house, uh, house one. So yeah, not a fan of the production there. Then we got Zoo featuring Sabrina Claudio with Settle for Less from the new Grace LP. The new Grace album is out now from Zoo. And uh, Zoo has really simplified his sound on this record, and particularly in this track, to a like, kind of basic pop trap beat. Like It's not really his deep house that I've come to know and love, and I originally fell in love with it from Zoo. It's kind of just like this weird, just like... Yeah, basic trap beat within. It's got a signature kind of moody vibe to it and vocals, but um, the style that I just don't really care for. So... That's that. Uh, speaking of albums, we've got the Can You See Me LP by Rez. Uh, the track I wanted to highlight was Rez and Digital Ethos with Cut Me Out. And um, I, how are we feeling about this Rez album? I got to know. I, let me know what you're feeling about this. I'm I'm pretty underwhelmed personally. Um, this song in particular is pretty flat and lacks a lot of real, I think, sonic movements to it. Um, yeah, I thought the vocals were kind of sluggish and actually takes a lot of energy out of the track in particular on this one. And uh, yeah, i just not impressed with this Rez LP. Then we've got Slender and Trivecta featuring Chris Howard with A Better World. I just did a reaction to this song if you want to see that uh, somewhere. I probably will forget to put the thing up there. But um, I think Chris Howard had a great vocal performance uh, and the track really let him explore his verses in depth with like kind of longer verse sections. But um, the drops were just your most generic melodic dubstep out there. So I think it's just meh. Then we've got Whipped Cream with Still. Uh, I think for the first time in a long time, or maybe even ever, uh, Whipped Cream put out like a, a generic song, like just a fairly basic 
generic song. It's more kind of laid back house cut, um, but one that really doesn't go much anywhere, I would say. It's got a kind of classic dark, moody tone to it, but um, doesn't really have those extra elements or the X factor to really kick it into high gear uh, that I love uh, and know from whipped cream in the past. So, yeah. We have Picasonic with Haruka. Uh, Picasonic brings some much needed brightness to the next Chompo compilation, as this track is a pretty simple and cheery 8 bit ish uh, Electro House tune. It's definitely fun and definitely an easy listen, so go listen to that. If you want to, and then we've got Igloo Ghost with Coral Mimic, uh, pretty wild and out there track, I must say. A bit of an eerie vibe to it, with lots of like stylistically muddy sounds all throughout as well. Um, it's a bit all over the place, and maybe just too much all over the place for me. Um, if that's your kind of style, you're kind of wonky, glitchy, just like weird. Uh, you'll like this a lot, but not not as much for me on this one. We got Dabin and Set the Sky featuring Clara May within the end. Uh, this is better than your average melodic dubstep, uh, but the formula is still quite stale, I would say. Uh, the mixing and vocals I thought were quite exceptional, but everything else uh, doesn't really keep me engaged as a listener. We got Big Gigantic and Smokeland with Always Wanna Talk. Um, at, at first, I, I didn't really love the vibe of this song, but I kind of got to grow, grow on me a little bit, but not enough to get it in good. Um, this song kind of just has one chapter, though, and it's just hard. It just goes hard. Um, after a short intro, the song just gives and gives and gives and gives with just like unrelenting force. It just doesn't stop. Um, and it's got a bit of an old school kind of dubstep banger sound to it with kind of wonky bass lines, simple vocal chops and crunchy synths. And um, yeah, I thought it was meh, maybe a little bit more and I would have enjoyed it a bit, but uh, yeah, it's just there and meh. We got Kirby featuring Nadia Gratas or Gatas with uh, "Want My Love," uh, more reserved, uh, kind of aiming more aiming more for commercial appeal. Kirby track, which we uh, are getting more and more lately with Kirby, not as much of the weird like funky house, whatever you want to call that uh, house that he makes. But um, yeah, uh, doesn't have those kind of big vibrant synth hits that we're used to getting from Kirby, but uh, it's still a very serviceable and, and enjoyable tune. And then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were good. And we're starting off with the brand new LP from Fortet, which is called Three. Uh, the highlighted track I want to talk about here is 31 Bloom. Um, this is just your kind of classic micro house from Fortet. Uh, very much a critic lover's track and album as a whole, I should say. It's got a lot of really small, intricate movements that work together simultaneously quite well. And lots of like competing melodies that all just kind of work in, inside your head. And they don't feel like they should out loud. But um, yeah, it's definitely quite a uh, unique listening experience. Experience for sure. We've got Chill featuring Aviella with Full Speed. The Sport Mode EP is out now on Dim Mac, I believe. And uh, this is one of the Speedhouse, tra- one of the better Speedhouse tracks I've heard as of late. I must say, I it was kind of um, Speedhouse was losing its luster for me, but uh, this one's pretty solid. It's got the kind of charm and very energetic energy that I I kind of knew from the original uh, Speedhouse stuff that I first heard and when it kind of came onto the scene. And um, yeah, this is just a, a good new Speedhouse cut, I would say. I don't know about the whole EP. I haven't listened through it all fully yet, but um, yeah. Yeah, and AVL helps a ton with the vocal performance. I thought she killed it on here, so. We've got On Planets with Sabotage. Uh, more of a classic dance tune from On Planets with this one, embracing a like, primarily garage soundscape. Um, still got a signature vocal inflection, but on top of a more grounded and linear track structure, which is something we don't really get a whole ton from On Planets. Um, I enjoyed the tones and style of the track, but I do think the kind of normalness of the structure kind of did bring it down a peg for me from On Planets. I really am a sucker for how diverse his sounds and structures are on tracks. And so, uh, yeah, still solid though. And then we got Arm and Hammer and Vulcan featuring Nev with Afterglow. Uh, an interesting melodic cut, I will say, with these kind of neat little sustain effects on the synth melodies all throughout the drops. That does give me, uh, gives it a bit more of an oomph, I would say, in that drop section. It makes it a little bit more uh, interesting for a melodic track, I- I'll have to say. I do like the extended movements as well. Uh, and overall, I thought it was uh, it was it was quite, quite enjoyable. I was surprised by how much I ended up liking this one. We got Dirty Phonics and Circadian with You Want Me. Fast taste, fast paced. DNB track that um, teeters the line of speed house and happy hardcore at times, um, but stays true to the dance floor DNB cut that it is. Uh, reminds me a lot of classic Pendulum, actually, this one in particular. So I uh, enjoyed it. Then we've got Amanu in Indie with Reminiscing. I really do think Amano's production uh, is some of the cleanest D&B out there. Uh, that being said, it is really starting to grow a bit stale for me now at this point. It's been a couple years now, the same sort of sound. And um, I just want a little a little more, I would say, or a little different. Uh, indie brings some great vocals, but it's thrown over some of you know, that pretty same old brutalist D&B from Amano. And uh, yeah, I think I've said Amanu differently every single time I say it, but yeah. 
We got Zabi with Sequel. Uh, this has got to be one of Zabi's most like natural songs, I would say, yet to date. Um, he often utilizes these like heavy synths and harsh bass lines, but this is like a very instrumentation and like focused and more uh, yeah vocal forward track than we've heard from Zabi in the past. Um, the vocals aren't processed as much, and the instrumentation is a little bit more of that kind of cleaner, raw sound. But um, yeah, it's solid. I do prefer when he goes nuts, but this is still great. We got Skylar and Remnant EXE with Genesis. Uh, yeah, a genre bending track here with like hits of synthwave, trap, dubstep, a little bit of everything here. Um, it does make the track kind of feel like it has nothing going for it and everything at the same time. It doesn't really know what it wants to be, but that's also kind of its charm and also part of the reason it's not that great, but also part of the reason I like it. And so, yeah, I, I do think the song is maybe tracked, trapped in being a little too linear. Uh, I think if it had a, a different or diverse movement, it could have uh, helped enhance it. But um, I really think the sound design carried this and excelled quite well. So... We got Paper Skies with Liquidist, uh, as one would be with Liquidist. Uh, it's a very wet uh, and wild color based tune with a kind of core piano ballad that's backing the whole track here that uh, kind of comes in in and out and then is the outro and then isn't the outro. And um, yeah, very creative track, I will say, with a lot going on. And I think it's all quite balanced really well. We got Chet Porter with Eyes. The Everything You've Ever Seen LP is out now. And uh, this tr track in particular is a soft, soft and steady kind of slow moving cut, at least in the first three minutes. Uh, and then it kind of uh, kicks into this like quasi trap, but like slow down breakdown finale. Um, there's lots of movements throughout and I love how like prevalent the sustains are uh, all throughout the song as well. And so this song in particular, I uh, did enjoy quite a bit. Go check out new Chet Porter. Then we got Feed Me with If Only, uh, another jumpy, high energy, chaotic goodness uh, of a track from Feed Me, a seemingly second track from an upcoming project of some sort, an EP, LP, don't know what it is yet, but I specifically love the vocal chops on this one and ultimately how like every element seemed to play off each other uh, one after another, so... Then we've got Virtual Riot and Electric featuring Leah Culver with the Neon Angel VIP from the new Simulation DLC, which is a remix package from the Simulation album back in 2021, I want to say, uh, from Virtual Riot. And this is the VIP here, obviously. And uh, this is just absolutely merciless drum step. Uh, this is just... Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I do prefer the original, but I think this was a brilliant uh, direction to take the remix in. It's nonstop, it's abrasive, and it gives a different flavor of heavy uh, that we don't normally hear from Virtual Riot all the time. And my number one track of the week is Wave Dash Had to Go, a funky track with playful beats and synth runs that all sound very natural and raw. It just makes you feel like you're in the room listening uh, as they kind of play off at the beginning the kind of it's supposed to be like a kind of this was a made in the moment type song we're like oh 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 this sounds good let's play around with that and um with that lead in as you'll hear when you listen to the song right away but uh yeah brilliant new cut from a seemingly another larger project coming out from wave dash at some point with the maddie on track and now this one and so i'm excited for whatever's coming down the pipe for wave dash i've been loving these first two tracks so oh uh, yeah that's been this week in edm let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below but other than that i'm dakota for Bro Media, and i'll see you guys in another video